Hello guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is Jason Vibelen aka Uganizon118 and today we will learn about biochemistry. Okay, so what is a biochemistry? Biochemistry is a branch in chemistry that deals with the study of biomolecules and their biochemical processes occurring in living matter. So basically we will understand how living matter uh, works, how living matter uh, process the biomolecules in order for a living cell to, to live and to reproduce and to, to grow. Okay, so in this case, we will study the four basic biomolecules which are actually inside the living cells. Okay, so what are these four basic biomolecules? We have number one is carbohydrates, number two we have proteins, number three we have lipids, and the last one is nucleic acids. So all of these biomolecules we will be uh, have lessons uh, for these four biomolecules that we will learn how are these biomolecules help in a living organisms and how are they being metabolized in order to produce a, an energy which helps the organisms to move and to reproduce and also to to use that energy for cellular processes or biochemical processes and biochemical processes may include uh, metabolism so we will uh, have uh, carbohydrate metabolism later on and protein metabolism or nitrogen metabolism and also lipid metabolism okay so we have also cellular respiration and of course, photosynthesis is also a biochemical processes that occurs in a living cell. So the first biomolecule that we will uh, talk about is the first and the basic one, which is carbohydrates. Okay. So what is or what are carbohydrates? Basically, the, the more or generally the, the definition for a carbohydrate is it's it came from its word itself, which is carbo, which came from carbon, and also hydrates, which came from water. So basically, it can be defined as hydrates of carbon because the general formula is actually contains a carbon and you have your water here as hydrate, okay? That is H2O. So this is the general formula for carbohydrates where N is the number of uh, atoms that will be present there, okay? Or number of carbon atoms okay but basically carbohydrates contains three three above three carbons okay so that would be the number of carbons that, that could be considered as a carbohydrate so it should be uh, above three carbons okay so if for example that if you have uh, uh, three carbon there so how do we use that formula okay for example if you have n is equal to three so therefore, that would be the the uh, the formula for the that uh, carbohydrate would be C three. Then three times two that would be six. So C three H six. Then three times one that would be three. Then O three. So this will now be the formula of the simplest carbohydrate. Okay. So we will talk about that more and more as we go along with this topic. So another definition for carbohydrate is that according to its structural definition that carbohydrates are actually polyhydroxy aldehydes or ketones so as we as we look at the structure of a carbohydrates we can really see that a lot of uh, of its structures contains a an oh group which is what we call the hydroxy so if there are a lot of hydroxy then that will be considered as a polyhydroxy and if that carbohydrate uh, contains an aldehyde group then it is a polyhydroxy aldehyde if it contains a ketone group then it is a polyhydroxy ketone so i have here an example of a carbohydrate so uh, plants usually uh, uh, produce carbohydrates okay in a press in a presence of a glucose molecule okay so gl glucose so this is c6h12o6 Okay, that means that as you go with this formula, N there is actually 6. Am I right? Okay. 
So this is the formula of the glucose. So plants produce glucose in the presence of light by the process called photosynthesis. Okay, it actually uh, combines the six molecules of carbon dioxide and six molecules of water to produce uh, glucose, which is a carbohydrate, and also releases an oxygen, which eventually used by the animals or humans for energy metabolism. Okay, so this this uh, oxygen will be used to metabolize the uh, the glucose. Okay, that is actually uh, 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 consumed by animals and by animals, okay, and humans. Okay, so if they consume uh, because because carbohydrate is also our source of energy. Okay, so therefore. If we eat carbohydrates, then with the presence of the oxygen, then we can therefore metabolize uh, glucose, thereby releasing a uh, large amount of energy, which can be used for to for animals and humans to do work. Okay. Then after that, it also releases carbon dioxide, which it goes back to the atmosphere or the environment, and thereby absorbed by the plants for another. Uh, uh, photosynthesis okay which will uh, produce again glucose and the process continues and that is what we call the cycle okay that is actually chemical cycling that's it okay so these are the examples of the carbohydrates so as you can see right as you can see that all of them are actually polyhydroxy okay you have an OH, 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 OH. So these are polyhydroxy. And it could be an aldehyde because we have a functional group there which is an aldehyde. Am I right? So review with your organic chemistry. An aldehyde group has a functional group of this one. You have RC, double bond O, and you have H. Am I right? So therefore, all of these uh, carbohydrates here are actually polyhydroxy aldehyde. So later on, we will have an example of a polyhydroxy ketone which is actually fructose okay fructose is an example of a polyhydroxy ketone which is also a carbohydrate so these uh, uh, carbohydrates here like the glucose the allose the mannose are polyhydroxy aldehydes because they contain an oh which have many oh there and contains a functional group which is an aldehyde So the simplest carbohydrates are what we call the monosaccharides. And these monosaccharides contains 3 to 6 carbons. Okay? So monosaccharides contains 3 to 6 carbons. And examples of these monosaccharides are this one. Okay. So these are the examples of uh, monosaccharides. And the most, the simplest monosaccharides for, for a... A carbohydrate or with an aldehyde group so these are actually with an aldehyde group so it's deglyceraldehyde so deglyceraldehyde is the simplest monosaccharide however in the ketone group okay so in the ketone group we have dihydroxyacetone as our simplest uh, monosaccharide okay so dihydroxyacetone is the simplest monosaccharide remember that your ketone, that it is called the ketone because of the functional group as RC double band O. Review with your uh, organic chemistry. Okay, so you have your C double band O here. Okay, C double band O. Actually, this this structure here is actually in the Fisher projection formula. So I will be discussing that later on about the Fisher projection. So I am showing to you only the functional groups which are aldehyde here. And the other one is a ketone group. Okay, so this is a polyhydroxyaldehyde here. This is the group of the polyhydroxyaldehyde. And this one is the group of the polyhydroxy ketone. So both of them contains uh, many OH. And if it contains an, a functional group, which is an aldehyde, then that is a polyhydroxyaldehyde. And if it contains a ketone group, then that would be a polyhydroxy ketone. Okay, so this monosaccharides contains 3 to 6 carbons. 
and the simplest monosaccharides are glyceraldehyde and dihydroxyacetone. Okay, then we have a carbon-4 group here. Then we have also a carbon-5 group there. Okay, and we have your carbon-6 group, which is the last one. So we have also a carbon-4 here. Then you have your carbon-5 and your carbon-6 here also. Okay? So how do we name monosaccharides? Okay, we can name monosaccharides by using the functional group that is present on that monosaccharide. So, for example, if it contains an aldehyde group, then we can name it as an aldose. Okay? So, the OSE there is actually used in naming sugar. Okay? That is really uh, the IUPAC naming of sugar. So, the OSE, OSE there. Remember the glucose. It has OSE. Fructose, galactose, maltose. So it has actually an OSE at the end of the name. Okay? So if it is an aldehyde group, then you can say that that sugar is an aldose. Now if it belongs to a ketone functional group, then it is a ketose. Okay? So remember that if it is an aldehyde functional group present on that carbohydrate or that monosaccharide, then it is an aldose, while if it contains a ketone group, then actually it is a ketose. Okay, by the way, it's called monosaccharide because from the root word mono, which is actually simple or, or one uh, unit, and you have your saccharide, it's from the Latin word saccharum, okay, that is from the Latin word saccharum, which means sugar. Okay, saccharum means actually sugar. So monosaccharides can be as can be translated as a simple sugar or simply as uh, carbohydrates, okay, or one sugar unit only, okay. That is what we call the monosaccharides. Okay, remember this. Uh, how do uh, naming for monosaccharides? And another way of naming monosaccharides is by its number of number of a carbon present okay if if you have three carbon uh, three carbon uh, present on that a uh, monosaccharide then we can say that it is a triose okay if it is it has three carbon then another way to name it is that by combining the functional group and your three carbon then we can say it is an aldo triose Okay, so the more specific one for this uh, name of this molecule could be aldotriose. Okay, combining aldose and triose, you can produce a name which is an aldotriose. Okay, another one, so you have this one, how many carbons are there? You have one, two, three, four, five, and six. It has a functional group of an aldehyde, so it could be named as an aldose. Yes, it is an aldose. For naming for six carbon, hex. Hex is from the prefix that it contains six. Then it is a six carbon, a monosaccharide, then you can name it as an hexose. Combining aldose and hexose, you can create a monosaccharide name which is an aldohexose. Okay, do you get it? All right. The next one is, you notice how many carbon are present there? You have one, two, three, four, Five, six. So there are six carbon. But what functional group is present on this monosaccharide? It is actually a ketone functional group. So therefore, this is not an aldose. This is a ketose. Okay, the more general name for this is a ketose. Okay, but it is a six carbon a sugar. Then you can name this as a hexose. But the more specific one or uh, the more uh, accurate, or how do we say that, or combining ketose and hexose, we can create a name which is actually a ketohexose. Okay? So that is how we name. But there are also the, the most uh, uh, way, or the most accurate way in naming uh, monosaccharide is their true name. 
uh, the true name of the monosaccharide. Okay, so what is that? Okay, remember the example that I gave to you that the simplest monosaccharide that contains uh, uh, aldehyde group and contains three carbon only is what we call the glyceraldehyde. Okay, so this is the most accurate way of naming the monosaccharide or a carbohydrate that contains a three carbon. Okay, remember that that two uh, distinguishable according to distinguishable property of monosaccharides according to its functional group. If that monosaccharides contains an aldehyde group with three carbon, then that is a glyceraldehyde. But if it is a monosaccharide that belongs to the ketone group with three carbon also, that is actually dihydroxy acetone. Okay? So remember those table. You can research actually those table, the aldoses and the ketoses group of monosaccharide. Okay? So the next one, okay, this is actually a D glucose. Okay? So that is a glucose sugar. Okay, so we can name it as a D glucose. So I will just uh, uh, discuss this later on. So how do we how do we say or how do we, how do we determine that this sugar is a D sugar or how do is it an L sugar? Okay, so there are actually two types of uh, stereoisomer or naming of sugars. We have the D and the L. Okay, so I will just uh, uh, discuss that later on. Okay, the next one is this is a ketone. Okay, it is belongs to the ketose or the ketose uh, sugar. Okay, so therefore uh, this is actually the name of that sugar is actually fructose. So later on I will I will uh, discuss to you okay some of the uh, sugars in the ketone group okay and some of the sugars in the uh, uh, aldehyde group okay the ketose and the aldose uh, group of sugars okay To fully understand the different types of stereoisomers, or what we call the D and the L isomer of sugars, we should uh, first discuss uh, stereoisomer and stereochemistry. Okay, so this is a, a very interesting uh, lesson. Okay, so what are what is stereochemistry? So when you say stereochemistry, it's actually the study of spatial arrangements of atoms. So it's different from the isomer that we have discussed in organic chemistry, like for example, the, the molecular isomer or what do you call the constitutional isomer, I mean, and also the cis-trans isomer. That is actually different. Okay, for this stereochemistry, it's the same or we may say that those two substances are actually stereoisomer because they have the same molecular formula, but they only differ in the spatial arrangement of atoms. Okay, so we will, I will uh, show to you some examples in order to, to really uh, understand what is this stereochemistry all about, or what is this uh, stereoisomer, how, uh, how I can say that these two substances are stereoisomer, how I they differ from constitutional isomer, or the cis-trans isomer. Remember, the key component here is that the spatial arrangement of atoms. They differ on that spatial orientation of the atoms. Okay? And the concept of stereochemistry is actually the, con the principle of handedness. Okay, so you look at this uh, figure here. Okay. First is we're going to... to, uh, to to elaborate first the concept of handedness. Okay. Uh, so, as you can see here, so if you, you have your two hands, the left, of course, the left and the right hand. Okay, the left and the right hand. Okay. Okay, remember that your left hand and your right hand, they're actually mirror images to each other. Okay. They're actually mirror images to each other. Okay, you, as you can see, you have the opposite uh, direction. Okay. The opposite. Okay, so your left and your right are actually mirror images to each other. So you can you can uh, you can see it with your own hands, or oh, and tell that they are actually uh, opposite to each other. Okay. However, if you are going to uh, 
to put your hands or to put your left hands over to your right hands. Okay, if you put your left hands over to your right hands, they are actually non super imposable. So they cannot be superimposed with each other. Okay, why? You look at that. They are mirror images. Okay, they are mirror images. But if you are going to put your left hand at the top of your right hand, they can never be superimposed. They are non superimposable images. Okay? So they are non superimposable. If you are going to put your left hand over to your right hand, they can never be superimposed. And they are what we call non superimposable mirror images, which are actually enantiomers. Enantiomer is a type of stereoisomer that these two substances are non superimposable although they are mirror images to each other. Okay? So, in molecules, molecule C, A, B, C, D, okay, molecule uh, carbon that contains A, B, C, D, okay, uh, molecules. So, it could be considered to have a stereochemistry. Okay? If the carbon, which is a central carbon, is attached to different groups or four different groups. It should be four different groups in order for this uh, carbon to be considered to have a stereochemistry okay? or to have a stereoisomer. So remember that carbon should, should be attached with four different groups. Like for example, on this figure. Okay? Then, yet that could be considered that that molecule has a stereo isomer or has a stereo chemistry because the carbon there or the central carbon is bonded to four different groups your a is different from b your b is different from c and they are different with each other okay and that carbon there is what we call the chiral carbon or the chiral center or another term is what we call the stereogenic center okay so there are so many names of this carbon here okay it could be a chiral center a, a chiral carbon okay it could be a chiral carbon or another term is a stereogenic uh, carbon or stereogenic center okay that that those are the names of that carbon there. So if it contains a chiral center or a chiral carbon, then that molecule has a stereoisomer or it possesses stereochemistry. Okay, remember the rules in determining that that uh, carbon or that molecule has a stereoisomer is that the chiral carbon or that the carbon should be a chiral carbon. That means it should be bonded into four different groups. Okay. Remember that. Okay. So, as I have discussed earlier, that enantiomers, enantiomers are actually two substances that are mirror images and non-superimposable with each other. So if this if you have two substances or two monosaccharides or two sugars that are mirror images to each other and therefore they are non superimposable then the relationship between those two substances are what we call enantiomer. So they are enantiomer with each other. And molecules that exist in that enantiomeric form are what we call chiral molecules and therefore that chiral molecules contain a chiral carbon or a chiral center or a stereogenic carbon or a stereogenic center okay to be considered that that molecule is a chiral molecule okay so it contains a chiral carbon or what with what other term is also called asymmetric carbon so, chiral carbon or it could be stereogenic uh, carbon or stereogenic center. Okay? 
So, a carbon that is bonded to four different groups. So, a chiral carbon should be bonded into four different groups. Ha? It, it couldn't be three or two or other one of that as the same. So, it should be different groups. Remember, it should be different groups. Okay? Like, for example, if you have carbon there and both of these are the same, they are both A. So, although they are bonded into four Dif uh, four groups, but the two groups are the same, okay, the two groups are the same, then this carbon is not a chiral carbon, okay? So, although, remember that, although there are different groups attached to that, four different groups attached to that carbon, but if two of them are the same groups, then they are not chiral Okay, they are not, this is not a chiral molecule and this is not a chiral carbon. Remember, it should be four different groups. Okay? And it shouldn't be three groups. Okay? This carbon is not considered to be chiral if it only bonds with three groups. So let's take a look at the structure of glyceraldehyde and dihydroxyacetone. Remember, glyceraldehyde and dihydroxyacetone are the simplest monosaccharide because they only contains a three carbon on its structure. This is the simplest monosaccharide. So let's go first to glyceraldehyde. So the structure of a glyceraldehyde, it, has, it contains an aldehyde group because it belongs to an aldose. It it also contains car three carbon. Okay, so glyceraldehyde, you have H here, so you have CH2OH. So this is the structure of a glyceraldehyde. Now let's take a look at if glyceraldehyde has a chiral center or glyceraldehyde has no chiral center at all or it, it, has, it doesn't contain a chiral carbon. So let's find out. Okay, the first carbon here, this is our priority carbon. This is a second carbon and the third carbon. Okay, so take a look at of that, those carbon. Can you consider that this first carbon here is a chiral carbon? Yes or no? No. Remember that that carbon can be considered to be chiral if that carbon is bonded to four different groups. First group here, we have one, you have two, and the last one is three. Okay, so therefore, that is not four groups or four different groups. It only contains three groups. So this carbon here is not chiral. Okay, so the next one, so this is the first the second, and the third. So we have found out that the first carbon is not chiral. How about the second carbon? Yes or no? Yes, of course. The second carbon is a chiral carbon. This one is a chiral carbon. Why? You have the first group there. You have the second group here. The third group. And this is the last group. So therefore, this carbon is bonded to four different groups Then that carbon is a chiral carbon. Okay? So carbon number two for glyceraldehyde is a chiral carbon. How about carbon number three? Is it chiral or not? So if we're going to break down that, that portion there, the CH2OH, it actually looks like this. This is, it has an OH there, and the 2H2 are bonded also to carbon. Okay. So, and that one there is bonded to the other two carbon. Okay, I will just put it that, that way. Okay, so this carbon number 3, is it chiral or not? No. Why? Because that the atoms bonded to that carbon have contains the same. The two atoms of the of bonded to that carbon is actually the same. They are the same with each other. And remember, it should be four different groups. Although this one is different and the other one is different, 
but these two are the same. So therefore, this carbon is not chiral. So for glyceraldehyde, only carbon number two is a chiral carbon. Okay? Okay. Okay, let's take a look at the structure of a dihydroxy acetone. So dihydroxy acetone is actually from the ketones, okay? They're the functional group of that monosaccharide contains a ketone. So this is the structure of the uh, dihydroxy acetone. So you can look at uh, the structure, you can research the structure of this dihydroxy acetone, okay? And now website or in any website that you can have to research the can uh, you can have the google okay to research the structure of the hydroxy acetone so this is the structure of the hydroxy acetone okay it is it contains three carbon also you have one two and three so now the question is which carbon here is actually uh, contains a chiral carbon okay so carbon number one so it's the same as the CH2OH of the last carbon on the glyceraldehyde, di ba? I told you, this one, the CH2OH. So you have H here, H, and you have OH. So we can break down that CH2OH as this one, okay? So therefore, this carbon is not chiral. So carbon number one is not chiral. It's because two of the bonded atoms are the same. Okay, so therefore, this is not chiral. That is not chiral. Carbon number two, not chiral again. Why? Because this carbon is only bonded to three different groups. Okay, or three groups. And remember, chiral carbon should be bonded into four different groups. And carbon number three is not chiral also because CH2OH, the two atoms there, have the same, is the same, are the same. Okay, two bonded atoms and that carbon there are the same. So therefore, that is not chiral. So the hydroxy acetone contains no chiral carbon and therefore there are there is no stereo isomer of the hydroxy acetone. And this, uh, this uh, simply as monosaccharide is considered to be optically inactive okay so it can be considered as optically inactive so i will discuss to you uh, op optical isomers or uh, not not optical isomers but optical activity uh, for sugars later on so diadoxyacetone has no stereo isomer and therefore it considered to be as optically inactive okay because it doesn't uh, it doesn't have an optical uh, activity because it has no stereochemistry or it has it doesn't contain a chiral carbon. Okay, it has no stereogenic center. However, for glyceraldehyde, it is optically active because carbon number two in the glyceraldehyde is actually chiral carbon. Okay, I will discuss more of that later.